Welcome to Excellent Adventures, where I, your host, Reese Sweeney, take a step away from my duties as a radio and TV personality and give you a first-hand look at my other love, backyard chickens and homesteading. Take a listen to conversations I have with others who are in farming, homesteading, and connected brands. And some of those conversations go a little like this. She does say I have too much, though. She says I have too many, but I don't think I have enough. The chicken math started mathing. Yep, yep, it's never ending. I only started with like four laying hens. Now I have over 100 chickens and geese and quail. So the first question we ask everybody that comes on to the Excellent Adventures, what was your old cluck moment? The first thing that comes to mind is when the first time I got locked inside one of my own chicken coops. We talk about the highs, the lows, and everything in between. Now let's see who's on this episode of Excellent Adventures. All right, we're back at it with another episode of Excellent Adventures. We have another special guest on the line. This lady right here is my GOAT inspiration. She has an amazing (laughs) program. goat yoga and cuddle session she's in the carolina so if you're out there and you like health and 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 just physical fitness and mental health she's definitely somebody you want to be listening to right now we have tracy on the line hey Hey, we're so excited to be here and i brought hope so she's our guest star today she's a four-year-old baby or kid so uh, i'm so excited to be here thank you for having us our pleasure. I was just about to say, this is probably the best duo that we've ever had on Excellent Adventures. Yay! <laughs> How do you name these babies? Okay, so I do, I'm big on like themes, like I love a good theme. And so my first round of goats was classic country singers. So like we've got June, Johnny, Hank, Waylon, uh, Dolly. And then I did fun food names um, last year. So we have like Skittles, Starburst. Uh, Snickers, uh, Twix, and so really fun food names, uh, Mocha, Macchiato, and, but I named her, she's special because of, we, I had lost um, a really special goat to me, she's a, she started this herd that I have now, and uh, we, I lost her two weeks ago, and so this was the first kid born after, and so I named her Hope, so, you know, we all need hope, and um, to me, I just really fit her, and so, so she's our hope for 2024. I love it. We were talking about her hairstyle up there, and it, I, I said it yeah. kind of looked like a little Superman, the little thing that yes. hangs on his head. <laughs> and that's amazing. So she's like your superwoman goat. <laughs> she is. She is. And she was born, you know, we had a really, uh, like, a for us in North Carolina, it's cold. So we had, like, down to the teens at night and some, um, you know, 20s in the day. And, of course, she was born right in the middle of that. So she's a tough little goat, and her mom did a good job. But, um so, so yeah, she's pretty special. We're absolutely going to get into breeding and raising baby goats because that's something I want to get into, and I'm sure some of our listeners want to hear about it too. But we got to get yeah. this backstory first because everybody's not out here doing goat yoga and goat cuddles and has just <laughs> a herd of beautiful goats at their side. So let's get into the, the backstory. What was your – we usually say what's your old cluck moment, meaning like that moment that you knew you were in the chicken game but because you're a goat mama. What was the moment that you said, oh, bleat, I'm in here now? Oh, goodness. Okay, so I started with, uh, I worked, I grew up on a farm, and actually, I'm kind of a first generation. I talked my parents into getting a farm. I started with horses, and then we just went all in, FFA, 4-H, raising, like, everything you could think of. And then when I graduated high school, I kind of went to the city ways, and I didn't have animals for a little bit. And um, so I had saved up, um, working corporate jobs and bartending, and I saved up, and I decided... I've got to get back in uh, my horses and animals, like a big part of my soul was just missing, you know, and so I saved up and got a horse and then I found a farm um, where I could like board horses and I was like, oh, I can do birthday parties and lessons. And so I literally just quit my job and I put all my money into it and just went like full in. That was 2014. And then in 2017, I had a friend, I had got June and Johnny that what I call the go originals. Um, and, um, 
uh, a friend of mine had just got her goat yoga certificate and I'm down for when it comes to business, like I'll try, I love trying new things. You got to explore and try different things and kind of see what works, you know? And, um, I was like, she said, Hey, you've got the goats. Why don't we do goat yoga? And I was like, yeah, girl, let's do it. I was like, that sounds so much fun. You know, goats are so therapeutic for people. They're such funny and they're sweet and just being around goats, like most animals, it releases dopamines and endorphins in our body. Just hanging out with them and then you've got yoga which is like super beneficial for um you know it's not just stretching you can actually like release toxins from your kidneys and liver and just like there's like all this cool stuff that goes into yoga moves so combining the two is like super healthy super fun and i said let's give it a shot and i thought it would do pretty good but it took off like we exploded um and you know by the time covid hit we were doing events all over Charlotte, which is like one of the biggest cities to us. We yeah. had been in, invited to like Georgia Tech. We were supposed to go to Georgia Tech right before it hit. So we we're doing classes. We were on TV and, you know, the newspapers and um, and then COVID hit. And I'm like, OK, we couldn't do yoga for a little bit. But when they lifted it and, you know, people, it was such a struggle for people to be home in their house and isolated. And and everyone was really struggling. And um, and so I thought cuddle sessions, like let people just come hang out if they come in little separate groups like it's just you and your family so you're around them anyways or whoever you choose um come and do cuddle sessions and i did it like super safe where i kept my distance but showed them how to handle the goats and they they just took off big time and that's when i realized like people this is just so good i had vets with ptsd that would come and say tracy this is the only time like i don't feel anxiety or i'm not mm -hmm. stressed and thinking about and i was like wow you know it's 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 therapeutic you know so i um it just took off and then right now it's, it's our main deal i'm i've got horses and i hope to start my lesson program this year but we just i don't have the setup at this new place so um we really are doing we do the goat yoga and the goat snuggles a lot so when you talk about these goats and how they change people's mental health and just how people react to them you light up yourself do you realize oh <laughs> uh, yeah um you know, I get this like feeling and to me, it's really important. You know, I do this because of course I love animals, but I want to make a change in the world through these animals with animals. I want to bring joy and happiness and people forget like all their worries and, and just enjoy the moment, you know, and um, also get people into farming and starting out with some chickens and a couple goats and, and um, you know, it's just so good for like all over health, you know, so but that's really so you say that um, uh, I'm very passionate about it. I'm very passionate about it. I think your energy comes across in your social media. I know when we started following you, I just I just try to follow people that have good energy. I want that around me, even if it's virtual. And you're yeah. one of those people that when you pop up on a timeline, you're just your voice, your smile, just dealing with those animals. It's, it's amazing. So we just wanted to say that and give you some flowers before we get back into the just the, the regular. Thank part of you. The yeah, that's very, that's very kind. And that means a lot to me. Nope. Now I see you holding the baby. I started out my goat journey way differently, right? Chicken okay. man. I got some goats. My daughter, she, she was very interested in goats. I love them myself. Um, so mm -hmm. we went and we found somebody that had some baby goats. As soon as they were ready to be picked up, we went and picked them up, but they were, they hadn't been around people at all. So they oh, were very okay. skittish. They were very mm -hmm. skittish. And we got them back in March of last year. And now, like now they'll eat out my hands, they climb up me, stuff like that. Yes. It took a while. So I I've never had goats from scratch, right? I've had chickens from scratch. I've never but you have one right now. So I guess long yeah. story short, do you cuddle with them in the beginning? Like how was that process to get them to kind of bond with, with you? Yes, a lot of imprinting and cuddling from day one. Like the first week is vital. Um, for instance, I pie and muffin, they're two little um, babies that we have from Blueberry. Uh, and they were born at a farm camp. They had, of course, I'm, I'm immediately hands on with them, but I got really sick right after camp and so i didn't get to handle them a lot and so i've had to work they're they're a lot more skittish than a lot of my other kids because that first week i like to handle them every time i'm at the barn so all throughout the day i'm picking them up grabbing them 
petting them, loving on them, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, like you said, if you don't, they're super skittish. All farm animals are, you know. Chickens will be the same. If you don't, like, kind of mess with them as chicks and stuff, pigs, you know, you've got to do a lot of hands-on and handling them. It doesn't have to be, like, long periods, but just let them know you're their friend, you know. Yeah, I do. Uh, I definitely with the chickens, it, it's helped. The ones I hatched, and I as soon as they were out, I was talking to them and just feed them. And yep. when they could eat, I'll feed them. I did let uh, one of my hens that went broody kind of surrogate mother them, but was, <laughs> yeah, so she did. <laughs> Uh, I, we had this ongoing joke, like we know those aren't her kids because she's bright red, and I, they're I am Samani, so they're pitch black chickens. <laughs> so it's like you, you're you're like, you know those adopted. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't so, it cool seeing the moms like surrogate mother i have a goat that did that and i've had a chicken and it's like so so neat seeing animals like care for other young you know it's mm-hmm. not theirs but they just immediately step in and raise them and you would not know besides looking at them like you wouldn't know theirs aren't theirs you know mm-hmm. no I, I think it kind of characterizes what i would love for the world to be i know it's not i know it's so many different dynamics that go into that but just even just being transparent even me and you having this conversation and me being able to speak with people that don't look like me don't have similar backgrounds but we can connect on this level it's like a universal language and i think it could alleviate a lot of the bs that we we come across Yes, yes, I'm right there with you. We've reached that part of the show where we hooked you up with some insider information. And this week, it's all about eating, pet, and pasture. And I got a 20% discount code for you. As farmers, we know the love and care it takes to raise happy and healthy animals. So choose the best when it comes to bedding, premium cut timothy hay, and treats for your furry and feathery friends. So if you're looking for super absorbent hemp bedding or nesting pads for your laying ladies, look no further than eating, pet, and pasture. Check them out right now at eating, pet, and pasture. Pasture.com and first time shoppers get a 20% discount by typing in Reese at checkout. That's R E E C at checkout. Now let's get back to another excellent adventure. I've met so many different people through the animals and, and of all different backgrounds and ethnicities and just, you know, having the common ground because you all battle and struggle with the same things mm-hmm. and you have the animals in common. There's so much common ground and stuff to talk about and, um, and share with each other. So yeah, I'm really glad for that too because it does open your horizons and animal people most of the time we stick together like you'll see on a page if someone's having a problem to everybody comes together and they're they're commenting or messaging or praying you know what i mean they're just Mm -hmm. that really care of that community is is awesome see it gives you that hope and humanity again doesn't it it, def- it definitely does, man. I, like I said, I've run across so many people. Just like you said, I had a problem with the chicken and the outpour was so tremendous. Like the, the responses were, were incredible. I was getting DMs from people I'd never thought I would talk to in my life. And it was just so much positivity. I'm like, man, yes. I'm so backwards. It really is. It really is. But when it comes to animals, people will come together all day for animals. Yep, they will put true. aside all sorts of different differences, you know, um, and it makes you think, like, I do think, man, I wish we'd treat each other like this. Yeah, very Over each other's problems. <laughs> at least a couple goats or a couple chickens, I think the world would be a whole better place. I know it sounds, like, yeah. s- super corny, but I really do think that. <laughs> no, seriously, like, look at the difference in your life, you know, like, I'm sure from when you got them to not, like, just, like, mental health alone, I mean, having them is amazing what they do and having anal and what it teaches and teaches our kids growing up, too. You know, lessons for us, lessons for kids. <laughs> You know, um, I, I agree. I think everybody should have at least a couple chickens, you know, a couple goats, and then, you know, have you some little garden stuff and a feeling self-sufficient goes a long way too. And just having those few things to provide for your family, you know, yeah, you, and you can pick up tips from anybody and be welcome to it. Yes. There's so much information and there's so much pages and people that are willing to help you, you know, nowadays that's one good thing. Like, Technology, of course, has its like everything. It's good and it's bad. But the good is we have access to so much information from, you know, the generations before us and people that are in the trenches now that we can learn from. And I tell people that I've been doing it for, you know, 35 years, but I can always learn. There's so much to learn. And I'm always open to that. And you've got to keep your mind open in, you know, because we there's different ways to do things, you know, and each animal and situation is different, too. You can't just say, like, this is the way I do it with everyone because not every animal is going to respond the same, you know? Yeah. Just like people. No, and I appreciate that. Definitely. Definitely. 
let's jump yeah. back into kind of the breeding and raising. I know you said you spent a lot of time with them. You imprint. You said she was born at a farm camp. I'm not familiar with that. What's that? Not so not the but the two others. They were born. So I do farm camps where like um these were just one day in the summer. I'll do a three to five day camp, and I have kids. I bring them in. I teach them how to feed the animals, safety with the animals, um, handling them, petting them, um, and teaching about all the different ones. And we like ride horses at camp. We try to do some goat yoga, a lot of just free animal time, and a lot of just like playing on the farm. I like to see kids, like kids just have a great time. They're playing with sticks, they're playing in the dirt, they're making up games amongst themselves. You know, they're learning to like respect and care for animals. And so also like that could open kids that maybe want to be future farmers and that can introduce them into the world. Um, like I have kids, I started, like I said, I ran a lesson program for 10 years and I'm going to get back in that. I've got hundreds of students, but um, it's so neat because a lot of them are, are riding, barrel racing now, they're competing. Mm -hmm their you know their families have farms now and so it's so neat knowing like making that change in them you know and uh we always say like you'd rather have your daughter bring home a horse than bring home a i'll just say a donkey but you know the other word for donkey <laughs> you can say this is a safe space to call somebody okay. if you need to yeah yeah so bring home have your daughter bring home a horse instead of a jackass okay <laughs> right. Right. Now, i would absolutely love for any of my daughters to bring home a horse instead of that so yes right you. You're right <laughs> yeah it. yeah but um for breeding them, so all goats are different. I, my herd started with Nigerian dwarfs, but now I have five different breeds. Okay. Um, I have the the Nigerian dwarfs. Some are pygmies. I don't have. I have one that may be a full pygmy, but it's impossible to tell without a blood test. But mm -hmm. pygmies are very short legs. They are like short and round more. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are a little taller. They're still a dwarf breed, but they will have blue eyes where pygmies cannot have blue eyes. So okay. that's what you'll know if it's not a full blood. And then I have the myotonic fainting goats, which I never thought I would have because I honestly, I don't like to see them faint. It's mm -hmm. very uncomfortable. You know, they cry out some, they get stiff. They just like, but there are some of the like easiest goats to raise and they're such like very chill personalities, you know? So that's like her mom is a myotonic fainting goat. I can't tell if she's got a lot of the gene, so sometimes you'll be able to tell within a couple of weeks of them, but they'll get real stiff, you know, everything when they're young, like everything makes them faint. Like wow. something goes too fast or, you know, now they get older, they learn not to fall over. Usually they stiffen their legs and they stretch them out really far from the, in the mm. front and back and they like stabilize themselves. And then they'll be like, oh, and they'll just like start walking real stiff. Um, I got Nubians. They're a big size. They actually can be a dairy or beef goat. Um, they're they're really good milk producers. And then I've got mini Nubians, which is a mix. You saying the Nubians are really good milk producers? Really good milk producers. Nigerians are great milk producers, but they're about half the size. Nubians you can get easily, you know, um, sometimes a gallon of milk a day from them, like half a gallon, you know, it depends on your quality, but you can get a lot of milk from your Nubians. Nigerians, you get a, you know, maybe a pint or so a day, but it's very, um, it's got a little more flavor, a little more rich um, mm. than the Nigerians are. So, but you know, goat's milk is incredible. I don't know if you know this, but like even newborn babies can mm. uh, have goat's milk sometimes. And people that are lactose intolerant a lot of time can have goat's milk. I had a conversation so. with the lady up in uh, Wisconsin and she had mm -hmm. uh, a, a not Crohn's disease, but it was a, a gastric situation like that. And mm -hmm. she said that she tried almost everything when she started using raw goat's milk that changed her life. Now she's thriving, has a whole 4-H uh, and farm program, and she's just yes. mm -hmm. Yay! That's so awesome. I love to hear that story because, I mean, I've had five major surgeries myself, and I deal with a lot of gastric issues, and I'll tell you, it, it puts you, stop you in your tracks, the pain and the mm -hmm. issues from it, and really are, take your quality of life down. You want to stand up a little bit? Yeah. She, she knows this interview is about her. She's just talking yes. <laughs> I love yeah, it. she's been talking the whole time. She's very sweet. She's a lot, really chill, kind of like her mom. Mm -hmm. um, we had a new baby born yesterday, and I can tell she's a little more feisty. She's already <laughs> louder. She's already jumping on mom more. So it's, like, really cool. You can see the personalities almost instant. Within a couple of days, you can kind of see. 
But um, yeah, goat's milk is, is really great. There's a huge need for it too. If you're thinking about getting into goats, you know, in your area, I know in mine, there's a huge, huge demand for goat's milk. There's like waiting lists at the all like natural stores or homeopathic stores and stuff like that. So it's something that I encourage you. It can at least cover some of your grain costs and some costs of the animals, you know, and um and anybody can do the goat yoga is a little harder, but the snuggle sessions, like I've sh taught a couple of my friends about doing those. And they're very simple. If you're comfortable with having people at your property, come out hour sessions. I do like 15 an hour and people can come and just play with them. They hold them, you know, pet them, give them treats and stuff. And so it's a way to kind of help cover a little cost and it socializes your animals a lot. The animals love it. They're getting more attention. So it's really like a plus all the way around. We've reached that part of the show where we hooked you up with some insider information and this time it's some egg side information. Y'all know what I mean. Because <laughs> people ask me all the time, how do you get your chickens so fluffy and healthy and happy and their eggs are so bright beautiful and they taste delicious too i would love to dedicate all those things to me coming in and having a great time in that chicken coop every day and shaking it up with those ladies but the fact is it comes from a healthy and balanced diet of purina's laina that's the brand we use whether you've got laying hens and you want to go with the purina laina plus omega-3 or you've got a bunch of baby chicks running around in your brooder and you go with that purina start and grow crumble you can't lose i know we haven't so visit their website today and in three easy steps you you can get discount coupons for the Purina product that's right for some great nutrition for your animals. I did it myself and it only took me about two minutes. It's absolutely worth it. And to make things easier, we have the hyperlink on our website, blackyardchickens.com. Just look under product of the month and you'll see the link right there to go and try your Purina feed greatness. And through their trial program, they can pair you with the right nutrition and let you try it with your animals and see the results. Now I can tell you all day how Purina feed greatness has been absolutely phenomenal phenomenal for my chickens goats ducks and rabbits but you can see for yourself go to blackyardchickens with the z.com now let's get back to this week's adventure i would love to have that conversation with you too about that because yeah. I, I was just trying to figure out just some different ways to get because i we have this program the excellent adventure program where we're introducing kids to these goats and to goats mm -hmm. the chickens the ducks the rabbits the the livestock protection dogs um and now we yeah, have two rescue ponies nice. So I uh, love the ponies and the yeah. ponies would do great for snuggles or petting too. Not, you know, I call them snuggles, you know, but like the petting is part of it. Like we have the baby cow they can pet when they, you know, come do the snuggles. So now you have those cool, adorable mini ponies. I love mm -hmm. them. <laughs> and thank you for rescuing them too. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so you could do that. They could pet the chickens. They could play with the goats, hold the goats, pet the ponies, but we can definitely talk about that. I can give you some information and stuff and like the waiver that I use and stuff for that. That'd be amazing. Thank you for that. Yeah. And just introducing yeah, people to that lifestyle is like we talked about earlier is great. Now with the milk and, and, and the, I want to talk about that because are there any specific tools that you use? I've seen some of the, some of the boards that the, the goats walk up on the ramp and then you kind of yeah. get and feed or treats while you're milking them. Or are those some of the things you use as well? Definitely. That's key. So your milk and stand is what usually we'll call it. And they're pretty simple to build. If you have someone that can maybe build you one, you know, you want to just have it at a good level where you can sit on a stool and, um, you know, and milk the cow, you got to have something to put their head in. And it's like where you kind of lock their head and, um, and they have like their food where they can eat. Once they get trained, like you see in a lot of these videos, which is amazing that they, the goats know they pull them in, they get up on the stand and they're going to get a treat while they get, or get milk and that relieves some pressure off them too and once they know the routine it's very a lot easier to do your um you know just youtube is great for all the videos you can find because each goat's going to be a little different like nigerian their teat is a lot smaller so you're only going to use like a fingertip or maybe some of your bigger breeds or like cows you're going to use your whole hand to milk so yeah. there are some differences make sure you want to clean your udder and your teat really good strain your milk you know things like that you learn about how to to keep it afterwards and things like that but it's you know nothing 
it's not really complex. Like a lot of the animal stuff isn't. It's just stuff that goes into it for each animal. Learning, hands-on experience. My suggestion is find a farmer in your area. And a lot of times they're happy to do it. Post on like a farming page or reach out to farmers and say, hey, I need a mentor. I'm looking to learn to, to milk goats or trim their hooves. It's, it's very important to learn to trim their hooves too. Um, you know, can I have a mentor? A lot of times we'll teach you for free. You could also say, hey, I'll help out on your farm in exchange, you know, do an hour to work for them putting their time to teaching you their the tools of the trade, you know. So it's really great. I love, I always tell people try to get some hands-on experience at a farm. No, and a lot of us are so willing to have free help, okay? <laughs> no, I am. So I don't even have a whole farm. I just got a couple acres and the animals and we just keep adding on more, but definitely we'll yeah. some help here and there. That's why I said I don't have friends anymore because every time somebody comes over to see the animals, then they're working. <laughs> I saw that video of your friend. Like, yeah, I thought he was coming to hang out, but then he's in there like dumping feed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was having a good time though. Like, they all have a good yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, they do. And most of the time, people, anybody they come over, they're probably like, "Can I go see the animals? What do you mm -hmm. got out there?" Like, exactly. you know, they want to see them and pet them and stuff. So, yeah, and I think it's so neat to get in people back you know, to their animals, having, like you said, you just had a couple acres, but look at what all you're able to do on those couple acres. Yeah. You know, it doesn't take a ton of land to have these smaller farms and, and, um, or homestead, you know, um, with some animals. So I think it's really great what you're doing with the kids and bringing them into this world. Cause a lot of the kids, they won't get that opportunity, you know? Hmm. No, you're right. You're right. And that's what, that's exactly what we're doing it for. And, um, I know before you said you kind of talk to your parents and getting you into the farm life and then you you fast forward it you were doing 4-h and different things i jumped into yeah. this thing kind of cold turkey but <laughs> like you said, there's so much information that people are willing to help I, I just want anybody listening to know you can start anywhere but is when you do start just be open-minded Exactly. Definitely be open minded and realize like stuff is going to happen. Stuff's going to come up. You're going to have a game plan and your animals are going to have a different game plan sometimes, you know, <laughs> and like it can be so frustrating at times, but you'll get the hang of it. You'll you'll get the feel for it, you know, and things will start going good. And it's just uh, one of those things that like all the good does, you're going to have a lot of moments, you're pulling your hair out, but then there's so many other moments that just make it all worth it. You know, don't go into it thinking that it's easy though, because it's not easy and it, it's a big commitment, you know, um, so you got to make sure that you are committed to it and, um, and open-minded and willing to learn, you know, just because, like I said, I've been doing it 35 years and I still learn stuff all the time. So right. you, you always want to make sure you're learning and, you know. What do you think your biggest challenge is with having go with having so many? How many do you have? Do you know? Okay, I have. Yeah, I did. I was counting before the show because I said I bet he's gonna ask me how many I have. You know, actually, I have my goat shirt on. I said it started with one. Yep. It started with one, and then it like that. And that's not even. I've got. Um, I'm back up to 27 now because we had the last two that were born. Okay. Um, so 27. So the biggest thing is. I just got um, one of our my followers um, actually gifted me a goat log book, which is going to be really helpful. The big thing is keeping up with when their feet were trimmed, when were they wormed, um, when were they given their vaccine, stuff like that, you know, because goats, you, it, it, you really want to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, like preventative care, preventative, be on top of your stuff. Now, I don't worm. There's a lot of controversy in worming and we're learning a lot. And we know now you don't want to overworm and be worming. Like back in the day, we wormed our animals every three to four months. Like that was just it. That's what you did. You know, now I do a lot more natural dewormers. So you got like pumpkin seeds, pine trees. Um, um, you can use Diamexis earth a little bit in your grain. And there's a lot yeah. of some other natural wormers and herbs you can order. Um, I don't worm unless I think there's an issue. And sometimes I wore after kidding, depending on like how my dough looks. But keeping up with all your information, stay on top of your preventative stuff and have a good um, kit of different medicines and stuff. Because when these animals, a lot of times it's hard for people when they're new into it because animals will go down really quick. Like the mm -hmm. goat will seem like off one day and the next day it's on knocking on death's door, you know, mm -hmm. because they have to hide sickness and problems because that's how they stay in the herd, secure in the herd. When an animal starts to show weakness, the uh, it can be a danger for them in the herd, you know, so yeah. they try to sh don't show weakness or injury. So a lot of times 
they won't show you until it's pretty bad. So you really want to be on top of it, have a great vet, establish some kind of a relationship, even if it's just one time out to do like one vaccination or something, but you're in there, you're as a client. That yes. way when emergency comes up, they're going to answer and they're going to get to you. So it's really important to have a vet on hand. And goat vets can be hard to find. Uh, unfortunately, there's a, not as many as really mm. we need. I'm very fortunate in my area. We've got one like 20 minutes, but I know some areas it's two, three hours for a vet, you know, for a goat vet. So having all those medicines and stuff on hand will help a lot. So you can treat all you can treat, you know, a lot of things you can treat your own, but that way you can be treating and doing something until the vet can arrive. You that know? makes sense. What's like your go-to? What is your, uh, I know on my first aid kit for my kids, I got Band-Aids, I got Neosporin, I got Tylenol, some gauze. Like what would be a good yeah. first aid goat kit? Okay, first aid goat kit. So some medicines you want to have, you want to have Banamine. Now this is going to have to come from your vet, but uh, it's very, very good to have on. Um, there's some different, like Banamine and Meloxicam is another. You can get that from your vet. If you have an established relationship, usually they have no problem getting you a bottle of Banamine um, or sometimes the Meloxicam. Um, I tend, I use both, but I tend to use more Banamine, but um, it's like an Advil. It's like, you know, you want to talk to me? Hi. She said, hey, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, no, I don't like that medicine, and they don't either. They don't, but um, so banamine is like your Advil or uh, ibuprofen. You can also use baby um baby aspirin for goats as well. So have some of that. Have some Pepto. Um, you want to have some like vitamin, um, some selenium gel on hand. And I like to always keep electrolytes. So if they're sick, don't feel good, or you just had a mom give birth, electrolytes are a great way, you know, or some Gatorade. Um, keep you some iodine or um, betadine. I don't suggest using alcohol or peroxide on, on any wounds anymore because we have learned that they will kill the good tissue. Mm. So I really try to just treat with the banamine. The big thing with wounds is just keeping them clean, put some banadine. You know, you really don't want to wrap a lot of stuff. You just want to keep it clean. So um, those things keep you a thermometer. I bought one of those little, just like, you know, when you have a newborn baby and it mm -hmm. has like the, the bubble syringe, thermometer, those are your two main things. If you're having kids, bubble syringe to pull stuff if they need to help them to get that out to breathe and thermometer yes. for any time. You Goats have to run warm. So like you, they stay between a 101 and a, almost a 103. And so you want to keep them warm when they get too cold, especially as like kids, they can't eat. So that's okay. when you then you start running into multiple and organ failure and stuff. So um, like if, when you see a goat that's not feeling good, I would always suggest first thing to do is you're going to be check their uh, rectally, check their temperature and check their famancha, which you can learn that online. It's going to be you're going to be looking into the inner eyelid to see the color and yeah. you have a range of one to five. That's going to tell you like a red is good. Pink is OK. White's mm -hmm. like, OK, we got a major problem, you okay. know. Okay. So, uh, just, yeah, said, so those yeah, are some things. Problem. She said, she said yeah, <laughs> my eyes that color, it's a problem. She agrees. Yeah. I, I love it. Yep, we she we appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. And there's a lot of great lists. There's the goat emergency team on Facebook. They have these awesome flyers. They're in their files and they've got a flyer for everything you can think of. They're so yeah. great. Just start saving stuff like that. Make you a folder on your phone with like goat emergencies, goat care, make you a folder on YouTube with goat videos and stuff and, and stuff like that. There's so many good resources and never hesitate to reach out to one of us. Uh, I know speaking for myself, you, a lot of us, we don't mind. We love to help people. We'd rather help and give advice and the animal be better cared for you know so um so yeah so we're always happy to help i think farmers should animal people really should and do most times stick together yeah you're doing it right now you're helping you're helping uh, my flock right now just by giving the information we really appreciate it awesome yeah i'm so happy to help i love seeing all your videos um how many chickens do you have now See, I knew you were going to ask me that, so I counted this morning. <laughs> I have 16 chickens. <laughs> 16, How many? 16 chickens. That, that, that then I just lost one last week. Um, that was one, of my, one of my OGs, one of my originals. Um, she was about that three was, and a half. That was the one that was um, egg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I know. Yep. I know. Uh, That's so hard. Yeah, yeah, it really was. It's like one of, one of my friends leaving me, you know? 
it really is. I mean, you get such bonds and close with them and, and they're part of your friends or family group. They're not just a chicken or goat or animal. Like we're messing and having, you know, with them every day, all through the day, like you form these really bonds and, and you love all of them. Some we do bond with even more. Like there's some that are just like super special or you're a little closer to. And, um, yeah, so it is hard to say goodbye. It for is. Sure. But that thinned out. So I, I, I think I'm, psychologically uh, subconsciously making room for more chickens in the spring yeah. but one of my friends they own an exotic pet store and her mom one of her roosters passed she had two roosters she just she, they sleep in the house it's it's, it's an amazing incredible house chicken. Store. she has house chickens but one passed so I donated oh. two hens to her for the rooster so, so, so he can have company and she can kind of re- not replace it but just have a, a bigger family at her home right yeah well that was so sweet of you oh yep so we rehomed too so now we're, we're down to 16 which means that so you I probably definitely got room for more i'll probably have 30 by september <laughs> i guarantee it i guarantee it yeah for sure yeah. Um, I know I've only got like five right now and I'm like, oh, this is not enough. Like, okay, buddy, I, I've got to get more. Um, yeah. So chickens are awesome. They're so cool to watch and, and mm-hmm. just see. And like, they're, I don't know, they're so smart. My one Polish, her name is Ranch. And I was, uh, trimming hooks the other day. And so we use like, a um, a harness and you like raise them up off the ground because they fight you so bad and with the kids it's easier because my milk and stain also is you can use to trim hooves but not for the little kids so I had a little bit up and the thing and I was while I was going to put her up I was getting her hooked up and ranch my Polish chicken came over and like pecked at me <laughs> <laughs> she would like leave that girl alone <laughs> Yeah, my I swear she that. would take it up. Yeah, my rooster does that. Like when I'm trying to trying to do some things, like even if it's just hurting or trying to get the ponies to where I need them to be, because they they're like, when I interviewed the, the horse lady, she's the concrete cowgirl. No disrespect when I say horse lady, she said the lower to the ground, the closer they are to the devil, and that's the truth with these ponies, right? So <laughs> I'm trying to maneuver the ponies, and my rooster's like, "What are you doing to my homies?" <laughs> oh, he <laughs> so, ain't having it. He ain't like, having it. Right, right. I was trying to catch one of the hens yesterday to make sure she didn't have Bumblefoot. He thought I was harassing her. He's jumping up at me. I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I had to put him in air jail after that. So it was just, yep. uh, it, it, it's fun, man. It's it, it's really a fun just seeing all those personalities unfold. Yeah, and the social like hierarchy and the way things work within the animals, you know, yeah. And like seeing even different, um, you know, the chickens bonding with the goat or horses and goats and dogs or cats. And, you know, it, it's really cool just seeing them all. But yeah, roosters, they don't play. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure you've had some too. Which I don't like if I'm doing something and maybe it said them okay. But, you know, I've had some that are like coming for me no matter. I'm just walking in the barn. Yeah. So I'm like, no, not today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's those get rehomed because I can't take a chance yeah. with the kids around and stuff. So those those guys got it. I know they're doing a job, but I I have to. They got it. Yeah, you can't have the aggressive. Um, yeah, I had one that yeah did that went after my daughter. It was a beautiful like orange gold silky, but I was like, no, you got to go. And I don't know if you've seen this, but they are finding out now that some of those that are super aggressive, they have culled them and used them, and they're finding like huge testicles, giant. Mm-hmm. So that's and that's. A lot of people do say don't breed, you know, they're aggressive. So it yeah. makes you think, is that a genetic where they're having, where they have way too much testosterone because they're, they're have huge testicles. So obviously that's more pumping through. So it right. makes sense that they're just out of control because they have so much going, you know, that they're, they're, they're very aggressive. So Absolutely. yeah, I thought that was that- interesting definitely say that with, with dogs and horses i used to breed um pit bull terriers not to fight them or anything or show dogs and mm-hmm. when a puppy's aggressive we we immediately get that puppy fixed and just yep. let him be a pet and have a great life but we don't want to take the chance of passing on that trait to the next one that added amount of testosterone if you give us one second we're going to take a quick break come okay. right back if you give me one second um All and right. I'm make sure this thing is still going because we have to talk about enclosure we got to talk about feed because you you oh, are yeah. the 
mama. So we got to talk about all that stuff. And then we got to talk about what you got on the horizon for 2024. So let's jump into it. Before we talk about goat care, just in general, goat care, because I really do appreciate that first aid yeah. kit list. Right? Uh, let's talk about goat yoga. I know you said you kind of got into a pre-pandemic and then you moved, shipped into the cuddling. What is different? Yep. Beside the obvious, what is different with the goat yoga and, and, and how explosively helpful is it? <laughs> okay, so goat yoga is going to be a lot more, you know, I, I do my classes for beginners, but, um, and so I do beginner and try to do the easier moves, but it's still a good workout um, and good stretching, you know, even with beginner moves. So, super interactive we do we call um i do a lot of moves that where the goats can jump on your back and so one of the main moves is called tabletop but we call it goat pose it's kind of just when you're on your hands and knees and you've got your back flat you know and get the goat on top of you um and so our goats we give them animal crackers during class and so they know that they jump on the back they get a cracker and goats love to jump anyway so it works out like really good um i was wondering I was wondering, I'm sorry, I was wondering that do you have to train them to actually be actively in the yoga class? You do. Like, so each group of kids, they get to kind of learn. Like, so we give everybody a treat, a bag of animal crackers. And so I tell people that's how you make best friends with goats. You know, goats are super food driven. Like, that's where me and them are so much alike because we're very food motivated. Same. So, yeah. So, I'm like, this, that's why we get along so well. And so they know when they see yoga mats out, there's treats coming. The people are going to give them treats. We're giving them treats. They're getting all this attention, but it's mostly the treats that they're all about. So they literally like come running when they see yoga class, you know, and they're like looking around and trying to find them. And then they learn, you know, the jumping, like they can jump from about two weeks old. They could probably get on someone's back on their own, you mm -hmm. know, so they learn to jump up and get a treat and, and stuff like that. So some of them love more than others. They all have their own personalities. Of course, mm -hmm. the Nigerians are my big, they're the big jumpers, you know, in the crew. And so um but yeah they really do love the classes a lot and and you can see it like i said as they run out and they're they're just like it's just it's a bonus for them you know so gotcha. but yeah and it's it's so good for people what i love about go yoga is about 75 percent of each class is people that have never done yoga mm -hmm. but then they're like now they've done it and they're like oh i like yoga you know i actually like this a lot of them do enjoy it the goats make it fun so it's not as serious but it brings people into the yoga and so um and it's just the health benefits or for like mind body and soul are are so incredible for people um like at classes the energy and laughter and just the feeling is so great like you get high off of it because it's just so amazing seeing all the people have so much fun and have such a good time you know and, and i just love that no me too i i've seen some of the videos it looks amazing you yeah the people the ghosts are having a great time and it just seems like an incredible thing to do and and just to be able to connect with those animals just unlocks a whole nother form of health and awareness exactly it sure does it, it really does so it takes it takes it to that whole other level yeah and that you can't do without animals you know animals yeah. bring out in all of us i feel like the best and good and you know the the happiness and that they bring in and the just pure innocence of them you know what i mean it's not yeah. a complicated relationship it's it's simple you know you love respect them they love respect you and and so yeah it's really cool now, well, now I know with care, with all of our animals, good, clean water is great, but they all eat different things and they eat different things for different reasons. So if somebody was getting into goats, you got goat feed out there, you got this type of hay and timothy grass and alfalfa and this and that and the third, what so should we be stuff. feeding our goats? Okay, so... And just like with anything, but I feel like with goats, there is a lot of um, controversy on grain or no grain, especially when it comes to your withers. And and people say withers and bucks, but it's really mostly withers. So one of the top issues with the wither, which is a fixed goat, that either by banding him, uh, his testicles, or you castrate him, um, is that they will get what we call urinary calculi, which is like kind of like a human kidney stone, but it's going to get in their urethra and literally block the urine from coming out of their bladder. Okay. So, but what I found in, in a lot of research, and this isn't hundred percent, but you run into that problem a lot when you are fixing them way too early. And okay. it's, 
a lot of people like some people will fix it eight weeks but that's way way too early mm -hmm. i really and it's a pain because goats like a lot of animals are hypersexual so they're they're getting on their mm -hmm. girls and friends and they can do things really early on but i like to make sure mine are fully extending um out of the shaft so that you're you're seeing all their stuff you know and that way we're yeah it, <laughs> yeah, exactly they get all the lipstick out right. and and you want to see that in a good healthy in and out to, and it for some reason that just helps to make sure that those stones don't get blocked in there okay. once i see that about i usually wait till about 16 weeks um and it's a lot longer like i said you're gonna have to separate them from the other females and sometimes even from their mom but to me it's worth it because if you do it too early you can never come back from that and you could have those ca urinary calculus issues for the rest of their life and lose them to it um yeah. i have lost one wither to that but somebody fixed him before we got him he was a rescue too so he was just in horrible care to start with but um but besides that and knock on wood and i'm not saying it can never happen but right. i wait till late with my withers but all my withers do get grain because they're mixed in with my does and it's just too much to separate everybody to eat and mm -hmm. i but you do have to feed it's very important so that think fixing your fixing them later on and goats really need specific goat feed if you're doing it, especially with withers or bucks because there's an ammonium chloride balance it's super crucial for goats you know for the does too but uh, you know i really suggest just getting a goat specific food because that's already balanced in your grain so you don't have to worry about it right um so and goat feed we have a purina feed we use in in addition to the hay that we've been feeding yeah. and it seems to work really well we haven't had a, any issues knock on wood like you said so far because it's a balance Good. it's a balanced feed yeah so really you know make sure it's going to be a little bit more like an all stock feed around here is like 10 bucks mm -hmm. but my goat feed is about 15 16 bucks so yeah i'm spending a little more but i'm getting i know exactly what they're getting and mm -hmm. um, i'm making sure i'm not having those issues i use like um country feeds it's it's purina too or i think mm -hmm. or maybe yeah and it's a country feeds um there's a few you know a few different ones just make sure it says goat there's some different ones that'll say like a goat grower those can yeah. be used for dairy too they're kind of more for meat goats to really grow them out mm -hmm. but um and you have like your your textured or your pelleted uh, i will feed usually pelleted so more of a dry grain um throughout um the year but sometimes i'll give them a texture but mine actually seem to like the pellets more and then yeah. i also will give them boss which is something you can give the chickens pretty much all the animals so your black gold sunflower seeds are great and okay. then alfalfa pellets um with hay i use good old fescue grass hay and okay. unless i've got a really hard keeping animal um like when my goat was down i got her some alfalfa timothy stuff but i just go with fescue um it's affordable i mean hey even fescue is expensive nowadays yeah. but that's what my budget allows for and that's what i've been feeding my animals my whole life like i and said it unless I've got, yeah it looks great it's fine it's what they would eat if they go out in the field Mm -hmm. is that's what they're going to eat so yeah. um just make sure you know there's no mold in it um and just make sure like you know you're getting a lot of people say oh just get first cutting like second cutting and third cutting can be fine too we can't honestly be picky about it there's a lot of hay shortages there's not as much hay nowadays you know so um the biggest thing is just look out for mold look yeah. for mold so make sure it's dry but nice. yeah so dry. goat pellets and and hay the biggest thing is fresh water and hay is what they absolutely have to have that i've found the grain really helps me to keep the good weight on them i've always have somebody that's in milking or has a kid on them usually and so i just find that that the grain and they of course they love it you know so <laughs> right. right sometimes they love it too much because i walk outside and i got three round ones Oh my God. I've got some, I've got some that people ask me if they're pregnant. I'm like, that's a boy. Like, no, that's a boy. <laughs> yeah. You do got to be careful in the goats, like with other animals, like you can feed them in an hour or even 15 minutes later, they hear a bag and they will come yeah. stampeding like they haven't eaten at all, you know? Sure. So do be very careful. Don't overfeed them. It can be hard on their joints, you know, and, um, and on their rumen and stuff. So you want to be careful, usually like for a full grown, like around a cup a day, a cup of feeding or so is good for them. So. No, I appreciate but, all of that info. We, we have some good 
clean info for those trying to get into goat keeping. We've got ourselves yeah. a medical kit. We've got feeding practices. We've got some care practices. So, and we got some training practices. So you, you've yeah. kind of given us a whole plethora of, of ideas and things we needed. Wonderful. I definitely, yeah, I hope this helps help people out there. And I definitely encourage people to get into chickens or goats, you know, and, um, and I, you won't regret it. And it definitely are going to have some goat chicken farmer math going on. So yeah. just be prepared. <laughs> no, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. I know yeah. we all You're welcome. we're going to have to do yeah. a part two. I got to bring you back. You've got Yay! too much. To awesome i would love that yeah i've had a great time and um yeah i've got tons of info i'm happy to share and and talk with you further so just let me know and we'll definitely do a part two absolutely so this is just part one we appreciate you guys checking us out on this episode of excellent adventures if anybody's in the carolina area and they want to do a snuggle session or a goat yoga session how do they get in touch with you guys <laughs> Yeah, so um, we're on Facebook for Carolina Goat Yoga and Snuggle Sessions, um, or you can email us at carolinagoatyoga at yahoo.com. I'm working on our website. Um, I'm not a, in a big techie person, but I've got to get our website done. But just find us on Facebook for now. And we're on Insta, too, for Carolina Goat Yoga. And then you can reach us multiple ways through there. So. Awesome. Yes, we're, thank you so much. We're going to be taking a trip up there soon. I want that info in the summer um, so I can get my daughter up there for the farm class. I think we really enjoy that. And I want to learn. Yes. Too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Y'all come to farm camp. It'll be awesome. We would love to have y'all. So you just let me know. We'll make it happen. Okay, awesome. That's another excellent adventure. Thank you, Tracy. Looking forward to seeing yeah. you soon. And we'll be following on all the social media pages until then. Appreciate you. That's for being right. Keep up the good work. Bye, y'all. And our first guest to ever bring a live goat on to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am the first. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Excellent Adventures powered by Black Yard Chickens. Now, if you think you want to raise your own backyard flock, here's the site for you. BlackyardChickens.com. We make entertaining videos about raising baby chicks from scratch. You know what I mean by from scratch, right? Or maybe you want to learn how to take care of your own big chickens or hens and get those fresh eggs. Building a coop or buying a coop, having the necessary things inside that coop to get great egg production. You'll learn a lot of the neat tricks I've picked up along the way from other chicken enthusiasts. And you can get pretty eggs just like those. So follow us on social media and check us out on our YouTube channel. Bye.